where to start. I don't know where to begin or whatever. And so it's just, ugh, I never really get started into a good Bible reading program. Well, we have two of them for you. It's the one-year program or it's the two-year. Now, you don't have to, you know, get get caught up all the way from like January until now. But just start wherever this begins, okay? And so in January, we'll be starting off again uh, with uh, with the one year. So those of you that have the one year plan, well, you're getting close. You're getting close to the end of the Bible, amen? And so that's exciting. And so please uh, take advantage of that. It's just such a great, such a great uh, blessing that we have God's word, amen? Amen? All right, in your bulletin, there are some life notes. Grab those things that, you know, we've been talking about the incredible promises of God. And, I, and you know, and I just get sometimes just lost in, in this study, you know, because we just realize that um, God is so, God is so amazing. And, um, and he's faithful to his word. Amen. And so our scripture that we've been looking at over the last several weeks has been 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. And it reads, for his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of, of him, that's supposed to be him, who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us, and I capitalized each one of the letters there, it's not originally, but exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature or the life that God has for you. Amen? And he's got a wonderful place in life for each of us. You know, one of the things as we're studying the promises of God, that something that we're going to uh, just talk about just a few moments, is that, um, we, I, mean, I mean, God has given us incredible promises, but with each promise, and this is kind of the downside, because... Is that, but, but with each promise that God gives us, usually there is a condition or conditions. Okay? Because they are so precious, they are not to be treated lightly. The promises of God are, are serious things. And the promises of God are, 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 are the right of sons and daughters of God. And we should never want to just take advantage of God, amen, and just, you know, just get as much as we can get. That's not, that's not God in us. That's not Christ, just to get what we can get. But God has given us, you know, given us things so that we can want, so that we can give, okay? And so many of the blessings or the promises of God are, 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 are to build us up, to build our faith up, to build our character so that as, as we are living and and you know, we can challenge ourselves, but also challenge others. And, and so, in your life notes, as we follow along, with each promise, there are usually conditions, condition, a singular, or conditions. The promises of God are the inheritance of sons and daughters of God. And I just want you to know that this morning, that, that the promises of God are, are for you this morning. The Bible says all all God's promises are yes and amen to those who, uh, who believe, who are true believers in Jesus Christ. You know, not just have uh, a lot of believe in God, but no, who are committed to follow Christ. And, and none of us do it perfectly, but, but that's our heart, right? That's our desire. I want to do it perfect. I'm not going to do it, but I want to do it perfect. Amen? And so when that's your heart, and that's what's really moving inside you, then then these promises, you know, God doesn't have to worry about, you know, God's not sweating it up in heaven thinking, oh, my people are going to take advantage of me. <laughs> you know, they're going to treat me like a big Santa Claus or something like that. God isn't going to be fooled, amen? God knows, you know, God knows those who are committed to him, amen? And if you're committed to Christ this morning, I just want you to know that all the promises of God are yes and amen for you this morning, okay? And so... The promises of God. The promise of salvation, eternal life, comes with the, with the condition of what? We, that we need to repent and turn to Christ and commit our lives to Jesus Christ. The promise that we talked about this a few weeks ago. The promise that God will never leave us or forsake us. And I believe that was probably my favorite of the whole bunch. But anyway, it's conditioned upon my, my faith Amen. in God. That I believe that no matter 
how difficult life can get, no matter uh, you know, how bad it can become, that God will never, that there will never be a time that he will leave me hanging. Okay? And he'll just leave me hanging out to dry. That God will be there. You know, and we sang that song that Sunday that he will never let go. And God is a God who never lets go of his people. And that doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to go through some stuff. Amen? You know, you know, David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and that's, you know, I, that's going through some stuff, right? But he says, what, your rod, they, your rod and staff, they comfort me. You anoint my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You see? And so, the promise that it is God who works all things. You remember that one there? That God works for the good, for my good, in all things. Remember that? Well, and that's true. When my, when my imperfect love is rooted in the perfect love of God. Okay? When in my love for God is imperfect. Amen? Alright? But my love, my imperfect love is rooted in a perfect God. And the perfect love of God. And I know that even though it may not seem that way, I may, you know, everything that I'm seeing and hearing is telling me something different. I know that God is at work in my life. And that God is not idle. He's not, you know, He you know, He hasn't taken a vacation from me, but God is working in my life. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe that. These see, these are promises that. That, that enables me to get up in the morning and say, okay, God, it's you and me again today. Because I know that he's, gonna, that he's working for my good. Amen? He's working for my good. And then last week we talked about, now this is kind of a, kind of a strange promise, and, but yet it's one that we need to know that, that sometimes God will allow life to become more than you can handle. Amen. But the promise is this. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary, burdened, weighted down from life and disappointments and failures. And he says, and take my yoke. Amen. He promises what? That he will yoke himself to me. That he will walk. And he may not remove the, the, the difficulty, but he will walk with me through the difficulty. Amen. I'm just so glad he never leaves you. Amen? Yeah. God is good. The incredible promises of God are the right. The promises of God in your notes, the promises are God's gifts of grace. They really are. In its very various forms. And, and we talked about in our first week, remember that there's anywhere, you depend upon which translations you read, anywhere from three to 5,000 promises from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. And they're all for us. The promises of God's gift of grace. The conditions. And I want to teach on this just for a moment this morning because I believe this is so important because some of us are maybe not seeing the promise. You know, we're maybe clinging on to the promise, but we don't understand that there is a condition that may come with that promise. Amen? You follow what I'm saying? And so, and so we're kind of wondering, well, is God really, you know, does God really keep his promises? Well, let me tell you, he does. He does. But there are conditions. There are, you know, we have a responsibility. Amen? In my salvation, I have a responsibility to what? To believe and to repent and to turn my life to Christ. What's his promise? Eternal life. That's right. Amen? And so, the conditions are, are kind of how we activate, if you would. And I couldn't think of another word, so kind of that's how we receive the promise or see the promise fulfilled in my life is, is the conditions, okay? And Hebrews 11, 6 is a great verse which talks about the promises and the conditions of God, okay? And many of you have heard this verse many, many times. As soon as I start reading it, you're going to know it. Matt's going to have it on the screen. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith. But without faith is what? It's the conditions. But without faith, do you have faith in God? Now, how much faith do you need to have? Well, the Bible 
Bible says if you got the faith of the size of a mustard seed, boy, you, you can do incredible things. So it's not, well, I don't have big faith right now. If you got a little bit of faith, let me tell you, God can do great things in your life. And we all start off with a little bit of faith. Amen? Okay. But without faith, that's the condition. It is impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe. We must. There, there's another what? Condition. That's what that line there is in your life notes. It's a condition. We must what? And that word believe is, is the verb in the sentence. We must believe. The verb is the action. It's what we do. It's what you see. We must put our faith into action. Okay? And when we do that, what happens? We must believe that God is. He is who He is. Who He says He is. Amen? And that He is a rewarder. A rewarder is what? That's the what? That's the promise. The promise is what? That God is God rewards. He's a, he's a good God. Amen? He's a blessing God. He gives. He gives out His grace. He, he rewards us with the things that we need and the things that we're seeking Him after. Amen? Aren't you so glad? Yes. Amen. Some of you need to wake up. Too much turkey in you still this morning. Right? That tryptamine is kind of working on you right now. Is that what it's called? Tryptamine or something? Something like that. I don't know what it is. But nothing. Well, anyway. Anyway, that He is a rewarder. So that's the promise of them. That diligently seek Him. And there again, that's what? That's the condition. Do you see? In this, in this one promise here that God is a rewarder, in this one, this one promise, there's what? Three conditions. They're not hard, are they? You know, God doesn't make it hard for us. You know, basically you will find that most of the conditions that God requires of us regarding His promises is what? We believe. Because James tells us that a double-minded man, a man who does not believe, he, he should not expect that he shall get anything, right? right. Doesn't it say that? It said that in James chapter 1. So most, in most cases, the conditions of God that he lays out in his word regarding his promises, really, it just comes to the mind. Do we, do we have faith in God? Where is your faith at this morning? What is your faith in this morning? Is it in your job that God is your provider? Is it, you know, my job, my boss is my provider? You know, God could very easily change that. Do you know that? Maybe some of our lives, maybe that needs to be changed. So that we begin to really understand who's really in charge in our lives. And so faith, where is your faith at this morning? What do you believe? Do you believe that God is, that he, he is what we just read? Okay. How do we appropriate that faith? So what is the promise? What is the promise that he, he is rewarded? I give you these life notes so that you can write these things and that you can refer to them, maybe share them with someone else because this is, this is much better than what you paid for, okay? Yeah. Just a joke. <laughs> Amen. And what are the, the conditions? Faith, belief, seek. And so this morning, we want to look at two incredible, I'm going to give you two for one this morning. Amen, you're getting a deal. Amen. I mean like two for one. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> I, I don't like it. I, I, I really dislike stores that give you the buy one, second one off, 50% off. Because usually I don't want two. Anybody bothered by that? Yeah. Is that just me? It bothers me. I don't want two. So in order to get one, i got to buy one, then i got to get another one. But they make me feel like you're getting a deal. And guess what? You're not. But anyway, I don't know why you went on that. How many of this really does, you know, the whole shopping thing just really got your butt right now? Amen? Amen. My wife's downstairs, so I can say. Amen. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. We're going to look at two incredible promises. Actually, I believe that these promises, even though there are six verses in between them, I believe that these two promises that we're going to talk about are kind of linked together. Okay? But these are two incredible promises. 
I cannot tell you how many times in my 42 years of being a Christian that I have not gone to these verses and said, Oh God, I'm believing this promise. I'm believing, God, that this promise is for me. And so we're going to talk about what the promise is, but we're going to go more than just give you the promise. I'm going to give you also the condition to the promise. Because that's very, very important. So I hope that you jotted down those few things. Okay. And the first promise, and how many of you have heard this one here before? Some of you have plaques on your wall, you got scripts, you know, scripture, I mean you have it in some picture form or whatever on your wall. I know my one daughter, my daughter Alicia, we have a little painting, and it's not a painting, but it's more as she kind of wrote on the fancy, fancy writing. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that's is that not just a great verse? I mean, that's one of the great verses in the Bible that many believers know. But what is sad about this, that many believers do not avail themselves to. They don't avail themselves to this promise. And actually, it is a promise in God's word that he gives to you and I. I can do all things through Christ now let's go back a, a couple of verses. So if you're there in Philippians chapter 4, I hope that you are. In Philippians chapter 4, we're just going to go back two verses. We're going to get a context here because the context tells us what the promise is. Not necessarily the verse. The verse doesn't necessarily tell us really what the promise is. The context before it reveals what the promise is. But it is all-inclusive, so it's... But anyway, look, look what it says at verse 11. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am in to be what? Content. I think of Dorothy. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things yeah. through Christ who strengthens me. So what is the promise? The promise is this here. That in all the circumstances of life, the situations, the circumstances, that he promises what? The promise is strength. That's what the promise is. The promise is God is going to supply what? Strength. Now the word there, abased, for I know how to be abased. This word means is means to be brought low, to be brought uh, to be brought lowly, to be humbled. Okay. Uh, this word can also speak uh, uh, of like someone who has gone from from riches all of a sudden is like boom. I mean, destitute, homeless. This that I mean is like for I and Paul says for well, I know. I know, I've experienced that in my life. If you understand, if you know something about the Apostle Paul, he was a, a Pharisee. Pharisee in the, in, with the Jews was a place of position and, and power and influence and wealth. But when he became a follower of Jesus Christ, he was, he was exiled from that. And many times he, 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 he was absolutely, had nothing and this is what that word means. For I know how to be abased. I, I know what it means to be in great need of even just the basic fundamental things of life. And that's what he's talking about. Maybe there's times in your life when you've been abased. I remember distinctly a time in my life, and I've just kind of shared a brief testimony, is that, uh, you know, we were early in our marriage um, with my wife and I. We had Josh and and, and, and then uh, my, she got pregnant again. I didn't have any, I had a lot to do with that. But anyway, um, I, I can't blame all her for all that. But anyway, but it turned out to be a blessing. So, this, okay, anyway, let me just go on. But um, during her pregnancy, um, through circumstances not my own, uh, I was uh, basically someone who I was working at kind of backstabbed me, and, and I ended up getting fired. I didn't get you know, fired from uh, my job. Uh, 
for, for the things that they said that I did, that I, that I did, okay, and, and, and actually it was the one, it was the guy who was working with me who was doing all these things and then went to the boss and, and reported that it was me that was doing all this and I was fired. Now my wife is, is about three or four months pregnant at this particular time and we have no insurance now. And this was back in the, you know, my daughter was born in 70, in 77. Remember, you know, how many, okay, many of you were around in the, seven, in, in, in the mid to late 70s. Remember the gas shortages and the gas yeah. lines? Remember the, yeah. remember the odd even tag numbers that you had to get gas? And you can only get $2 of gas. Of course, $2 of gas was maybe four or five gallons at that particular, you know, at that time too, I'm not sure. But I remember uh, having no insurance. And I couldn't find a job. Jobs were Jobs were as scarce as you could possibly figure. And, and the job I had was a great job, great benefits. You know, we were doing well. We were, and during that six months or so, actually it lasted, lasted longer than six months. I mean, well, we were abased. We were brought low. Where we, where we were just trusting, believing God, just, you know. And, and God did some incredible miracles during that time. You know, we didn't go around telling everybody what our problems were, but... You know, there were times that we'd go to the mailbox and there'd be just enough money to pay rent and stuff like that. And it was credible. Well, uh, we went, um, in my wife's eighth month, we went to the hospital, which she was going to be delivered which, um, with uh, um, the second one, um, Rebecca, okay? And she was going to have a, a, a cesarean because she had a, a C-section the first time. And, Back in those days, basically, they just repeated that process again, okay? And so, and so we go in and we talk to the hospitals and whatever, and, and now the doctor was pretty cool. We had payments with him, but the hospital said, well, well you can't come. You can't come here unless you, unless you can give us a certain amount of, I think it was like $2,000 or something like that before, before, and they wouldn't let her be. Now, this is the days before health care is now, but they said, well, she's not welcome here. She cannot come here. You have to find some other place for her to go and <laughs> have this baby, you know. And, um, well, well, God supplied, you know, through, he even brought me down lower. You know, he get down as low as, you know, I don't know if anybody here has ever had to go to their father-in-law. Okay, a prideful person like myself. And I don't like to say that, that I'm a prideful person, but I'd be lying to say that I'm not a prideful person. I guess we all are in a sense, right? You know, that I had to go to my father-in-law and, and, and ask him for, for the $2,000 so that his daughter could have, you know, could have a baby in the hospital. Paul says, I know what it means to be completely abased. Completely humbled. And yet he also says too, but I also know how to be well fed. Meaning that, you know, what he was saying, that he, he knew what it meant to be overflowing. Do you know that either both can be a, a curse, really? Both of them can be problems for you? Yeah. And he says, for I know what it means to, to have plenty, to abound, to be full, to be overflowing. You see, the promise is this here. This is what... And during that six, six months, seven months time where, 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 you know, where we were going through this, it was only, it was only like a year after that God, God began to speak to my heart about going into ministry. It was during that six, seven months, even though it was probably the most difficult times in my life that I ever experienced, it was probably the six or seven months that I probably grew most in the Lord. Just, just... When you got nothing else in your family, and you got one, you got one in diapers, and another one is coming, and and not knowing how we're going to provide, even if we're going to even have a place to live, you know, it's just, it was an incredible time in my life, and yet that was when this verse became very real to me. And so basically, the promise goes something like this here: the promise of strength that in any situation, whether hungry or full. In prison or free, homeless or in a mansion, looking for a job <laughs> or employed, having a great job, whatever challenges or blessings that we may experience, it is because of Christ in me that I can face life. That I don't give up. 
that I just don't call it in, that there will never be a moment, and this is the promise of God, that there will never be a moment where there will not be a sufficient amount of strength to be able to go through. <laughs> to endure. And I know that some of you this morning, you're going through incredible things this morning. You're going through just, you feel like you're just going through, you know, I don't know if some of the young people here know about the ringers, you know, the washing machine and the ringer, you stick the clothes in the little, little crank thing, you know. My, I, I had two brothers who were very sick, uh, I was a sick, uh, so, uh, I was going to use another word, so to speak, but they were, but anyway, they used to, they used to take my shirt and put it in there. <laughs> you know, they, uh, anyway, but, uh, maybe some of you this morning you feel like you're being put through the ringer. You're just, God, I, I can't go anymore. You know, but let me just tell you right now, He promises. He gives you strength. He didn't promise that He may take the problem away. Oh, we just wish sometimes that God would just solve all our problems. First of all, God didn't create many of those problems. Right? Let's be truthful about it, right? God didn't create the problems. We usually create most of our problems for ourselves. But even when we create our own problems for ourselves in His mercy, He says, you know, I will give you strength. I will be there. I will help you. Here's some scripture. What is the condition? Let me just give that to you first. What is the condition? The condition is very simple. Dependence upon Jesus Christ. We trust that He is He is sufficient. Rather than self-dependence, and which is this is kind of what we're taught. This is the reason why many people struggle in the Christian walk, because everything that we learn in the world is basically opposite of what God tells us. Amen. See, the world tells us to be independent, to be you know, to be strong. You know, I mean, we need to be strong. But yet the fact is that, that my strength is in the Lord, not in yeah. myself. And so it's Christ dependence, trust. Let me, let me just read some of these scriptures to you. I think I wrote them in. I just uh, just listed them out in your life notes. But let me just read some of these scriptures. But just, let the, just let the word of God just kind of wash over you because that's really what the word does sometimes. The word just kind of just... The Bible talks about the washing of... The, of the word, you know, it's like taking a shower. You know, you get, you, you know, you're out playing, playing in the dirt, playing whatever you're doing, whatever you come in, you got dirt all over you. Just that shower just washes the dirt off. And you know, the word of God, it, it does the same thing. It just washes the, the, the effect of the world, the abuse of the world. Amen. Because the world and the world's tough, tough place. Listen to some of these verses. Isaiah 40, verse 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Amen? Isn't that great just to know that? You see, why am I giving you these scriptures? Because, see, the condition is, is what? Not self-dependence, but Christ-dependence and faith. Faith is. And so faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so speak these speak these verses over you. When you're when you're like God, uh, you know, then just this why some of these verses are here. In Psalms 46, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength and ever increasing present help and trouble. Ephesians 6 10, because sometimes we are we're in spiritual warfare. In the context of Ephesians 6, the spiritual warfare. But what does it say? Be strong, what? Just be strong? No. In the what? In the Lord. Okay? And in his what? In, his, in the power of his might. In that one, in that one verse, there's there's three different words for, for power: strength, power, and might. He, I think God wants us to get, to get the idea that there is what? There is power and strength available for you. Be strong in the Lord. And in Ephesians 6, 3, 6, which is a prayer, as Paul is praying for these believers at Ephesus, and he's praying that God, would, that God would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his strength. 
through his spirit, strengthened with, strengthened with power through his spirit. God promises strength for your spiritual journey. Amen. Aren't you so glad that he does that? I am so glad, amen, that he promises strength for the journey that I go through. And that second promise is kind of, kind of goes with this. Uh, and if, uh, Philippians 4.19, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so some of the, you know, sometimes what 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 do I need? I need strength. Amen. So it kind of goes along with it. Now the context here talks about, it talks a little bit about money, but yet that's not exclusively what Paul is talking about. Paul isn't just saying that God will supply manna for you or or God will supply money for you. God does promise to do that. As you notice that we never really even talked about all that. Some of you ought to know that already. That we need to be faithful and to give in tithes and offerings to God. And when we and when we do, see, there's a promise. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, there's a promise. God says, I, I will open up, I will throw, I will throw open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for you. And then second of all, he said, and I will rebuke the devourer. Some of you, it's not that you don't make enough money. It's things, the things that devour your money that need to stop. <laughs> Amen? Just let that kind of resonate in there for a little while. But anyway, but... And my God shall supply all your need. I would just want to look at one word in this, in this scripture as we're going to kind of wrap this up and then... Really, really would hope that if, you know, if God has brought you lowly, that you won't let pride come up and maybe keep you from maybe being 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 ministered to this morning. Be, being prayed for. Prayer is a wonderful thing. Amen. Amen. Prayer is a wonderful gift that God has given to us you know, to be able to help and encourage. And sometimes that's where strength comes from is through, is through prayer. You know, God has many, many, many kind of ways in which He can kind of release strength into you, and sometimes it is through prayer. And so I just want to, you know, if, if you're here this morning and if you have, you know, if you feel like you're being through, got kind of going through that river, and you just need strength this morning, I want to challenge you. Just come up and just, just let us pray for you this morning. You can come in agreement with prayer. And then if you're facing a great need, so let's just look at this word real quick, this word need. But it is huge. This, that single little four-letter word in this whole in this whole verse, really, really, it's it's it should be the focus. Notice that it's singular. And you know, I didn't just read it, because some of you would think was well, my God should supply all your needs. It doesn't say that, does it? My God shall supply all your need. What encompasses need? Whatever. See, it isn't just about money. God here is telling, telling us that He is that He is capable and able to what? To meet all need. And then second of all, and I want you to really Really write this down. This next phrase I'm going to. God promises to meet all your needs, but not all your wants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> write that next. Okay. Because some of we get confused between need and wants. Oh, yeah. you know we're we're in the season right now. The, the season of wants. I remember growing up as a young boy, and my mama my mama used to tell me all the time, "Son, you got a case of the wants." Anybody know what I'm talking about? You got a taste of the wants. <laughs> In other words, well, I wanted everything. But there's a big difference between want and a need. But I want to caution you with this. Don't, don't think that God is just interested in your needs alone. How do you know that sometimes God is God goes far above just the need? Amen. He goes far above just, see, he's a good God. Amen. Yes, he's going to meet your need. 
And there's verses in the Bible that say, in Psalms 37, verse 25, it says, Where I've never seen your righteous forsaken or his seed begging for life. God promises. I love it. The Lord's Prayer. In the Lord's Prayer, He puts right in there the whole thing about basic needs and give us this day our daily bread. See, He promises. And there's so many other verses, and there's two more that you can look at. And there's others that speak about the, the oh, just God is going to be there for you. He's going to meet that. But God goes over and above just just the needs that we can also trust him that he will also he cares about my wants as well, my desires even though yes he's no Santa Claus for sure and God wants to bless you but when you put Jesus, I believe this with all my heart, when you put Jesus number one in your life I believe that he cares about everything in your life then, everything, there's not an aspect of my life that he's not concerned about and that he doesn't want to see his will perform and his will work out in my life. So, so I believe, yeah, I can bring, I can bring those wants and those desires and know that God, that I'm not crossing the line. The script, oh, I should only bring God my needs. I believe that sometimes we've gotten a, a concept that God is stingy. God's cheap. <laughs> Do you have that concept this morning? God's <coughs> cheap. He promises the needs, but, you know, isn't it nice to have a nice, my grandson, he's, he, he's 11, he, he's 11 going on 16, I think that he is anyway. Uh, he has found the world of filet mignon. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? I have that sometimes, but he loves the world of filet mignon. Amen. Hallelujah. And enough said on that, right? God is good, isn't he? What's the condition? What's the condition? Let me leave you with the condition because it's so important. We leave it up to God, the when, the where, and the how. We trust God in your time. How you want to do it. Where do you want to do it? When do you want to do it? But know this that God is never late. But He might be late according to our time. Our time and His time, we know that doesn't go together. Amen. He's always too slow for me. And then, come on, let's be honest. Is He always too slow for you? Come on, God, speak a little bit. Well, yeah. part of that is what? Learn the trust. Learning to trust. Learning just to hang on. Okay, God. This is going to happen when you want it to happen. And it will happen. And it won't be a moment any, it won't be a moment late. So maybe you're here this morning and you have a great need and I don't know what it is. So my Bible says this here that He will supply all of your need. He promises that. He promises what? He will give me strength for the, all things that I will face in my life. He will give me the strength through Him. We can just bow your heads with me. And I just, I just want if God has spoke to your heart this morning, if there's, and I know that there's so many that are here this morning. And if you're Whichever category that you that you're in, or maybe both. If there's, you just need to be reminded this morning that God loves you. God's word, His word, He does not lie. He says, "I will give you strength." Is there someone here this morning? I just want you to stand on your feet and just just come right now to this altar this morning. If you just you feel like you're at the end of your strength. You need strength this morning. Strength for the fight. See, sometimes it's this. See, we're in a fight. Strength for the fight. I just have a couple more 
couple of our deacons just to come up, please. Just a couple of deacons. They're just going to just come behind you and just lay your hand on your shoulder. They're just going to be praying for you. My friend, I want you to know this point. He will give you strength. You have need this morning. Maybe it's financial need this morning. I, I don't know what it is, but his word says, I will supply that need this morning. Maybe it's it's in your marriage this morning. Maybe there's a need in your marriage this morning. And only God can meet that need. Let me tell you, my friend. Trust this. Will you just please just, just stand to your feet and just humble? Maybe God has humbled you and brought you to that place in your marriage or in that relationship. Whatever it is. Believe in this morning. Believe that He is able. The rest of you that are standing out there, will you just stretch your hands out towards these, yes. towards these ones? Because let me tell you, the needs are great. Dear God, we have to thank you this morning. I thank you this morning for, for who you are, first of all. Yes. And God, you will never change. My circumstances change, our lives change, but God, you never change. You're always faithful. You're, all, you're always going to be there. And Lord, these here, these ones, and I know that there's some that are sitting, sitting in their seats, and that's fine. I understand. And God sees you just as much as He sees those that have came up here. But know this when I want to just speak over you those scriptures yes. that God, you yes. can do all things through yes. Christ. Yes. Christ yes. is going to sustain yes. you. He yes. is going to speak yes. you. When you feel like you have no yes. more strength, when you feel like that you are at your complete end, yes. I want you to know this morning yes. that God, God is able, and He will yes. strengthen you. He will bring a resolve within your heart that no matter how difficult yes. it gets, yes. you will not let go. He will provide for you the strength, the spiritual strength in your soul, deep in your spirit that will cling on to the promises of God. Even though what you're seeing with your natural eye may tell you something totally different. Your natural eye will tell you that your life is falling apart. God is telling you this morning, He said, but I will give you strength. Yes. I am your refuge. Yes. I will, I will give you strength. Yes. Oh God. Some of you this morning are facing great need in your life. You can't fix what's broken. You can't fix it. It's beyond your ability. You've tried. You've tried to fix it. Some of the things in your life, your, your finances, your relationships. And God is saying this morning, I can fix it. Yes. But trust me. Jesus. I work differently than you work. <laughs> My time isn't always your time. Yes. My ways are not your ways. Jesus. But I will work. I will meet your need. Yes. He will not abandon you. He will not leave you. My friends, those of you that are sitting out there in your pews, I want you to know God will not abandon you. Yes. He, will, he will stick yes. with you. He'll stick closer yes. than any brother. Thank He'll you. stick closer than anyone Thank to you. Through thick and thin. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And He's the same God forever. Yes. And He'll be the same God for you tomorrow. Yes. And the things that you will face in life. Aren't you so glad? Come on, everyone stand at your feet. Aren't you so glad that we don't face life alone? That we are not alone in this. That we face, we walk through this life hand in hand with Jesus. He did not promise it would be easy. He did not promise that you will not be afflicted. But he promised, I will always be there with you. I will not leave you destined. I will not leave you strengthless. I will not leave you for the enemy to do what he wants to do with you. I will give you strength. I will meet your need. Hallelujah. Oh God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
aren't you so glad you serve a great God? Yeah. A God who's given us exceedingly great and precious promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're just gonna we're just gonna sing this old chorus and then you know we don't we don't need any music or anything like that. All we just need is lift up our voices. And I know you're gonna know this, know this song. Don't worry about the words, it just says, God is so good. God is so Jesus is going to be Amen. 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 Amen.